The George Washington, our Navy's first ballistic missile submarine, is ready to be deployed with its battery of 16 Polaris missiles. That momentous announcement comes on Navy Day when the nation looks again to the seas to help provide a retaliatory force least vulnerable to a potential enemy. Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Arleigh Burke, discusses the unlimited area for dispersal offered at sea. In the oceans, we find room to maneuver, room to exploit the unique advantages of flexibility and versatility, of unhindered mobility that are inherent in a seagoing environment. And we have another dimension in which to conceal our forces, another dimension in which to disperse and maneuver. We have combined the nuclear-powered submarine with the remarkable Polaris ballistic missile, which provides the highest coefficient of survival possible in any modern weapon system. The fleet ballistic missile system, mobile, dispersed, concealed, and with the built-in hardening required for operation in the depths of the sea, is our nation's first virtually invulnerable retaliatory weapon system. Fired from the submerged George Washington, each of the 16 Polaris missiles would be far more powerful than the first atomic bomb. The nation ensured of retaliatory strength that could survive any surprise attack. The 20-foot missiles are shot from their launching tubes to the surface by compressed air and travel by solid fuel rocket power after leaving the water. Night as well as day, poised to retaliate with pinpoint accuracy on any aggressor, they find their way to the target by means of an inertial guidance system. Admiral Burke sums up the awesome potential with these blunt words. This weapon system, combined with our mobile attack carrier striking forces, with United States ballistic missiles at home and deployed abroad, with our Air Force land-based bomber, furnishes our nation with a retaliatory mix that would spell national suicide to any aggressor who risks general nuclear war.